Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Tony Ruprecht, uh, the former minister for citizenship and multiculturalism. And we're here today, uh, actually with Olga, and uh, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the Native community and this festival later. But essentially, I want to talk about a very special subject, and that is the commitment we have to open a Nazarbayev Center right here in Canada, and the connections that the Nazarbayev Center would have between various communities, especially the communities who are called indigenous communities. And that, my friends, is one of the most important ideas because we find, we find that there is a big connection, a big similarity between the cultures of Kazakhstan and our native communities. I completely agree with Tony that the original inhabitants of Kazakhstan have a lot in common with those of Canada. And today we will have a closer look at the indigenous people of Canada. Hey EJ, can you share some information about the today's event? So as far as I know, it's uh, the gathering, legacy gathering, and it's in honor to the indigenous people. We're here at uh, downtown Toronto at the Nathan Phillips Square for the indigenous um, uh, Indian Residential School Legacy Days, uh, which is a, a sponsorship uh, of a number of organizations led by uh, Toronto Council Fire. And so this is intended for um, to bring people together to talk about the real issues that relate to the Indian Residential School, the system, the legacy that it has impacted our Indigenous communities um, through much of the cultural events and teachings and uh, an opportunity for everybody in the community, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, to learn from one another and to come together and to celebrate uh, all that is Indigeneity. We would like to know more about these main three groups of indigenous people. We have, um, when we talk about in the, the indigenous community, we have uh, uh, First Nations, uh, which can, can consist of both uh, status and non-status First Nation individuals, uh, Métis and uh, Inuit, and, uh, um, and that really is the main groups that, that make up the, the demographics of uh, indigenous people in Canada. So First Nations, Métis and Inuit are, are what we refer to. And what about you? Which group do you to? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I come from a territory called Wabidanga, which is known as White Sand. Uh, it's about 21 hours northwest of the city of Toronto here, still in Ontario, Canada. And my nations of people are known as the Northern Woodland Anishinaabe people, which is a very specific nation of people that are a part of the Anishinaabe, or otherwise known as the Ojibwe Nation. Um, and um, it's a very specific type of people that are situated on the northwest region of Lake Nipigon, Ontario. Dance, from an indigenous perspective, it's more an expression of the spirit that is exercised through the physical body. There's no sexualized behaviors of any kind. It really is a discovery of yourself. Some indigenous individuals who are born and raised in urban settings have no connection to their First Nations. I teach my students to reconnect through powwow dancing. Dance is one of those very, in my opinion, crucial components that define a person within their culture. I think uh, events like this is an opportunity for both the Indigenous community and the non-Indigenous community to come together and learn together. We're here to talk about residential school system and its impact on the Indigenous community. It, it doesn't just speak to the need for healing to exist within our Indigenous community, it also speaks to the need for society, the Canadian society as a collective, to also heal. And in order for us to move forward and learn in a good way, we have to sit and listen to the stories together. The indigenous people use stories for entertainment, recording history and education. As a teaching tool, stories are a valuable way to educate young people about the values and beliefs that First Nations consider important for their members. And my mom always used the trees as an example, right? You look at the trees here, you can see them, they're beautiful. She always used them as an example. 
She said, don't ever try to be like a man. You're looking for something to look up to. Don't look up to a man because he's the same as you. You want to look up to anything, you look up to a tree. And you see that tree, he provides tens and thousands of species with sustenance and shelter and medicine and shade and comfort, right? You can hug a tree. And she'd say, you know, look at that. Look at that tree. Look at those trees there, right? There's a pine standing next to a cedar, standing next to a maple, standing next to a sumac, standing next to a birch. And you see them standing there together, sharing their medicine freely. And at no point does the pine try to take over the cedar. At no point does the cedar try to take over the maple. At no point does the maple try to become a sumac. They stand together, they share their medicines freely, they do as the Creator intended them to do in the beginning of time. So when you're looking for someone to look up to, don't look up to a human being. Look up to the tree and be like a tree and share your medicine freely. Support tens and thousands of species and don't expect anything back in return. You're just doing your part. That's my mom's teachings. It just reminds me when ancestors share their stories, how it all happened. But maybe it's not written somewhere because your grandmother shares with her daughter, this daughter shares with her grandchildren, and so on and so on. It's like a storytelling which keeps going. It's bigger than that it's because we sit that. around that fire and creation tells us the story. The animals tell us the story of how to be kind and how to care and compassion and have all that. Nature, nature te teaches us. And so our interviews previously indicated that the idea to bring people together from the various nations, indigenous nations, right across the world to speak in one voice, to tell us to go back to nature. And so Kazakhstan, in fact, the native people of Kazakhstan, and the Kazakhstan people understand that because we see in the flag the great symbols of Mother Earth the symbol of the sun, the symbol of the great blue sky, and even the symbol of the eagle. And so my friends, it is easy to understand what we need to do to bring us together. And I think between Kazakhstan and Canada, the native peoples and the communities of those two nations have something in common. And that is to look around, create international peace, an international well-being, and to understand that all of us, that all cultures really, and all nations have one thing in common and one basic message. And that message has to say, we need to go back into our natural environment and see where the teachers are who can tell us what steps we should take. Because I'm not sure that the way our civilization has progressed is the way the future is in hold. It's not a natural disaster. It's a human man-made disaster. And it's pretty, pretty close. We're at the edge. Just think about generations, right? Five, seven generations from now, that's 150 years. What's gonna be left? It's gonna be a blink unless we come together, right? And start looking at each other as each other's people, as relatives to the animals and the trees. We look for, for native people to teach as teachers to not just our nation, but to other nations as well. And I think we recognize that to a large degree, that, that the natural environment is up for grabs right now. The natural, we're at the edge, like I yes. think someone has said that today, we're at the edge. And we're looking, and, and, in a way, we're looking to you and we're looking to the people who have in their heart the natural environment and nature as a teacher to tell us what we should do next 
in human terms, as a humanity, because mm -hmm. where we may be five minutes before midnight. You know, indigenous traditional ways of knowing and being, we speak about the teachings of the land. And we get our guidance and our understandings from the land, because after all, when we come into the world and we, we leave the world, we, we leave by going back to the land. And so our, our teaching and our philosophy speak about Mother Earth and the, and the understandings that go along with how we have connection to the Earth and all the elements of water, fire, air, and, um, and how we are all interconnected in one shape or form. And uh, Indigenous people have always been people who speak about the land and the need to protect the land. Without our land, without our waters, we won't exist. Yes. And so it's important that not just Indigenous people, but mainstream understands the seriousness that we yes. are in with it's regard serious. to the issues that plague our, our communities, that plague our world. We have only one world, and yet we are the ones who are ruining um, the chances for our generations ahead of us to live in a healthy environment. Um, and so it is important that us as Indigenous people in the now and mainstream speak to the need to fix the problem now yes. before it is too late. And so my friends, it's important to go back to the land and find the teachers and find the elders and find those who are able to structure our new environment, to structure our new world. And that's why the first president of Kazakhstan has this important message to structure our future. The first president, uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, has said on many occasions, what we need to do, we need unity, unity in diversity. And we also said, diversity is our strength. And that's why Canada and Kazakhstan has come together in order to teach others of what we need to do as a humanity. Thank you very much and I'm very happy you took the time to listen.